John Durham, the special counsel investigating whether there was any misconduct by the FBI in the Trump-Russia investigation, just released his findings. The report is now here. It has dropped. It is devastating to the FBI. And to a degree, it does exonerate Donald Trump. This is the deep state being revealed. And the question is, will the media and will our Democrat colleagues acknowledge it and start working with us to break up the deep state? Rachel Maddow is pure evil. <laughs> it's a hell of a title, isn't it? Mr. Reagan. All right, before I start this video, you got to subscribe to my new channel, Alpha Critic. I talk about new movies and TV shows. I tell you what's good. I tell you what's terrible. I complain about Hollywood. I got a great new video about Guardians of the Galaxy 3. And you're not going to believe this. You might want to sit down. It's not woke. I know. Pretty unbelievable. Highly recommend this movie. Really good movie. So pause the video. Go to Alpha Critic and subscribe to that channel. I did something kind of stupid today, guys. I watched Rachel Maddow. <laughs> I wanted to see what MSNBC thought about the Durham report. We all know that MSNBC is corrupt, uh, you know, that they're disingenuous, that they lie, that the left lies, that Democrats lie. But Rachel Maddow is on an entirely other level. I guess when you sell your soul to the devil, there's really not much left you can do but go with it, right? So I think that's where she is at. You know, anyone with a little bit of optimism thought, who knows, maybe there's a one in a million chance that Durham will come out with some real dirt, some real good stuff on the FBI. He'll name names. People will be arrested. We'll finally have justice. I mean, we didn't really believe that, <laughs> but we thought maybe, maybe there's some chance. Uh, but at the end of the day, we all knew that this was going to end up like all the other uh, investigations, everything else that happens in Washington, D.C. works out really well for the Democrats, not so well for Republicans, especially Donald Trump. But the really disappointing thing about the Durham investigation and the report here is that it really didn't reveal much new at all. Uh, it just kind of confirmed what re Republicans have been saying for a long time. I suppose the only good thing that came out of it was that even some some people on the left, like CNN, is now saying, yeah, what the FBI did here was entirely corrupt and wrong. It is devastating to the FBI, and to a degree, it does exonerate Donald Trump. Now, the FBI's come out with a statement that says, essentially, it says, whoopsie, our mistake, sorry, won't happen again, <laughs> our bad. The FBI putting out a statement today, had those reforms been in place since 2016, the missteps identified in the report could have been prevented. This report reinforces the importance of ensuring the FBI continues to do its work with the rigor, objectivity, and professionalism the American people deserve and rightly expect. This is, this is the FBI response to total corruption. Right. I mean, because this is not some small thing. Right. This is people compare Trump to Nixon all, all the time. Right. This is worse than Watergate. Right. That's what they always say. This actually is worse than Watergate. Right. I mean, that kind of inflammatory rhetoric becomes banal after a while. Right. It's boring because we hear it so often. This actually is worse than Watergate. We've been saying it for a long time. People should be arrested for this. People should go to prison for this. There are no additional charges. Nobody is bringing charges against Comey or anybody else. You know, what they, they got that lawyer, Kevin Kleinsmith. He's the only one that was ever really held accountable, and he wasn't held accountable at all. All right, so as incredibly unfortunate as the situation in Washington, D.C. is, as incredibly unfair as it is to Trump and ridiculously biased everything is toward the left and leftists and Democrats in Washington, D.C., Rachel Maddow's show about the Durham report was just unbelievable. I mean, it was like, and here's the reason why it's important that we watch this and we analyze it and we talk about it. This is the reason that half the country votes for Democrat politicians. It's because of people like Rachel Maddow blatantly lying to the American public. But before we get into that, I, of course, have to sell you something. There's no denying it. Gold is hot right now. Prices are soaring and experts are predicting even more to come. Not so long ago, gold reached its all-time high of $2,069 per ounce. And now it's inching ever closer to that number once again. Bank of America, one of the largest banks in the world, is saying that gold will rise further still to over $2,200 an ounce later this year. So what? Well, gold is already a safety net for your hard-earned money. And now when the stock market is all over the place and the value of the dollar is uncertain, being safe really counts like never before. Right now, Noble Gold is offering a five-ounce America the Beautiful coin for any qualified IRA or 401k rollover. 
silver. Terms apply. A solid silver U.S. Mint issued coin celebrating our national parks free with every qualifying precious metals IRA or 401k rollover. You can't go wrong with Noble Gold Investments. Call 877-646-5347 or go to noblegoldinvestments.com. That's noblegoldinvestments.com. All right, so like I said before, it is important that we watch what the left is being told and see how they are being brainwashed. So without further ado, let's see how Rachel Maddow responded to the Durham report. The long-awaited Durham report. Boy, they have been excited about this for a long time. Literally for years, former President Trump and his allies have been invoking the name John Durham, or sometimes Bull Durham, as the man who would save them and smite all of Trump's enemies. For years, they have been heralding the great revelations John Durham would soon reveal about Trump's political opponents and the deep state and all their evil ways. This is kind of funny. I mean, this is this is the kind of brainwashing that that Democrat voters suffer through. This is why they believe the kind of stuff that they do. They believe that Republicans are ridiculous, that we're that we're delusional and stuff like that because of the stuff that Rachel Maddow is saying here. She's pretending that we were absolutely convinced that the Durham report would destroy all of Trump's enemies, whatever she's saying. None of us believe that. We hope that maybe there would be something in Durham's report that would bring some kind of justice here. But none of us really believe that would happen. But we hoped maybe, maybe. See, that's the kind of measured approach that a normal mind has. We say, probably not, but look, there's a chance, and let's just hold out a little bit of hope. She frames this completely wrong. It's a, com a total lie, total distortion of reality, where she says Republicans were delusionally anticipating this, this great reckoning from John Durham. Not really. Not really. We, we had a modicum of hope. Modicum of hope isn't the same thing as this, you know, absolute belief, this prophecy that she's pretending exists. Right. So this is how she makes the conservatives look uh, absurd and ridiculous. Of course, it's all a lie. When that didn't seem to be happening, uh, Trump and his allies started pounding their chests and yelling at the clouds about why Durham hadn't acted yet, why he hadn't yet smote all of Trump's enemies, why, you know, there were Democrats who weren't yet at Guantanamo. <laughs> Durham will do it all. John Durham was appointed by Trump Attorney General Bill Barr. His assignment from Bill Barr was to prove that when Russia launched its operation to intervene in the U.S. presidential election in 2016 to try to help Trump win, Durham was supposed to prove in this investigation that the FBI was wrong to have investigated whether the Trump campaign itself was connected to what Russia was doing. For four long years, John Durham's supposedly bombshell findings were always tantalizingly close. The damning evidence was going to come any day. It has really never worked out the way they hoped. What's weird about Rachel Maddow is she kind of has a shtick like a stand-up comedian, right? Everything that she says that Republicans do is this exaggerated absurdity. And everything that Democrats do and say is really measured and intelligent and correct and all that kind of thing, right? So she creates this contrast that makes uh, Republicans look absurd. The funny thing about that is that Republicans, we don't have to do that. We just have to show video of Democrats of being Democrats. Like one of the most popular users of Twitter is Libs of TikTok. All Libs of TikTok does is she just posts videos of leftists being leftists. There's no commentary on it, nothing. It's not creatively edited. She just posts videos that Democrats are posting of themselves. And you can see who actually lives in clown world. Like who, who are the clowns? It's not Republicans. It's Democrats. And we don't have to do a whole comedy shtick exaggerating what Democrats think in order to make them look foolish. They just, in fact, it's hard for us to produce. I try to produce comedic stuff about Democrats, and it's difficult because Democrats are so absurd that comedy, comedy usually is like an exaggeration of reality. You can't exaggerate the absurdity of leftists. They're maximum level absurd at this point. But Rachel Maddow could exaggerate. Rachel Maddow can distort reality in order to make uh, Republicans look absurd because, you know, that's the only way to do it. You have to distort reality. You have to lie. You have to exaggerate the position of Republicans in order to make them look ridiculous because at the end of the day, we are the measured ones. We are the reasonable ones. But let's listen to more of Rachel Maddow's absurdities. 
Um, in sum total, what John Durham got out of his investigation was um, one guilty plea out of an FBI lawyer, an FBI employee, who admitted he made a misrepresentation in a single email. It should also be noted, though, that that lawyer's screw up was discovered not by John Durham, but by an entirely different investigation that had nothing to do with John Durham. That lawyer's screw up. She's framing she's framing the Kevin Klein Smith forgery as a mistake. <laughs> this guy should be in prison for years. Right. And he got four hours, 400 hours of community service, according to what she's posting here. That is an injustice, and she's celebrating it. She's basically saying this is proof that you know the Republicans and Donald Trump are ridiculous, and the Democrats uh, and the FBI and everybody involved in this thing to try to subvert the election, right? They were trying to actually interfere with the 2016 election, try to stop Trump from becoming president, try to help Hillary Clinton, again, far worse than anything that ever happened in Watergate, right? The FBI and the Clinton campaign were colluding, to use their word. They were conspiring to try to stop Trump from winning. You're not allowed to do that, right? That, that is corrupt on a variety of levels. Many people should be in prison for that. And she's sitting here and she's pointing this out and saying, oh, look how little consequence there was for this ridiculous injustice, this massive amount of corruption. Look at how little consequence there was for the FBI. Therefore, that somehow proves that this was not a big deal. I mean, honestly, this is one of the most unbelievable moments I've seen in television in a long time. Rachel Maddow pointing to complete breakdown of the justice system. This guy getting a slap on the wrist for probably the most corrupt thing that's ever happened in American politics. I mean, really, this is probably the most corrupt thing that's ever happened in American politics. She looks at the complete lack of consequence for it, and somehow that exonerates the FBI, exonerates the Democrats that were involved, exonerates the Hillary campaign. Ah, this woman's logic is completely absurd and shocking. Like I said, even CNN recognizes the corruption of the FBI here. Nevertheless, that FBI employee did plead guilty to making a misrepresentation in a single email, and his punishment was that he had to do some hours of community service. But that was kind of it. Last year, John Durham finally did bring two criminal cases to court stemming from his investigation. He lost both of those cases in very quick acquittals. Again, again, she's using the breakdown of the justice system Right. These people should be in prison, totally should be in prison right now. And she's saying because they're not in prison, because there was a breakdown in the justice system here, that's an indication that the Clinton campaign is completely innocent, that Donald Trump is being ridiculous, that the FBI is innocent, that Democrats are innocent, that all these people it's fine. It's all fine because the justice system broke down and didn't hold these people accountable. God, I hate this woman. In one of those two cases, the four women of the jury actually came out of the courtroom after the case and told reporters outside that the trial had not been worth the effort. She said, quote, I think we could have spent our time more wisely. After the second not guilty verdict, this was the AP's headline, quote, Trump's claim of crime of the century fizzles in three year probe. But that was OK, because that was only year three. And the smoking gun was going to be in Durham's report, which we now know would come out in year four. The report was still coming, right? John Durham's failed cases in court, they were all just part of the deep state conspiracy. When he finally put the report out, all would be revealed. Today, at long last, we have the report. You know what really drives me nuts is the smugness with which she expresses herself. She's got this sort of smug attitude. Like, I was right all along, and Republicans were wrong all along. <laughs> but she, she wasn't right all along. She's, she's like this paid shill for the left. She's paid basically to lie about politics. And then she's got this smug attitude like she was right all along. It, it's shocking to me. It's like, I don't know how people can be this evil, right? Lie this blatantly and then smile about it like, you know, with this this attitude, you just want to see this person's life be very, very bad. 
<laughs> that's the kind of thing you want. You kind of hope that she goes home and just cries herself to sleep because she knows that, you know, she's a, a completely corrupt and evil person. I mean, the real, I don't know, maybe she is. Maybe she is an absolutely miserable. I, I can only guess that every night she goes home and cries herself to sleep because she hates herself. That's the only thing I can imagine. Because how could you, like, I find it difficult to do my show sometimes because I have to watch a lot of crap that I don't want to see, like Drag Queen Story Hour and like Dylan Mulvaney and, you know, Biden barely able to function. And I, I can't, and Rachel Maddow, I have to watch her crappy show. So there's a lot of stuff that I have to do for my show that I don't want to do. And it, it it's really unpleasant and it reduces my quality of life to have to watch these. Things. I don't want to watch these things, but that's my job to do that. Right. So that's, that's what I do. We all got a job. It's not always pleasant. And we just, you know, nose to the grindstone, we just do it. We just do the job. Rachel Maddow intentionally spreads lies to the country. She doesn't have to do that. She's got a show. She could report the news. She could talk about the news as it is. But she doesn't. She crafts this narrative of complete fiction in order to push forward a far left radical agenda, right? And she does that intentionally every week or however often she has a show. She is the epitome of evil. How can she not hate herself? Nah. Shame. Shame. It's a shame what some people are willing to be in this world. For the Durham report, though, um, this really is it uh, today. After all those years and all those millions of dollars, no charges against anybody else, no new evidence turned up or revealed. That's just... That's just it. And so that has to be a big disappointment because they really thought this was going to be the end of all of their enemies and the triumph of their eternal reign. <laughs> OK, well, she's right. It is a big disappointment, but not for the reasons that she's saying. Uh, nobody thought any of those things. She's it's a complete mischaracterization of Republicans. She knows that, of course. She, she's a clown. You know, she's a clown on TV. Rachel Maddow is here saying it's done. This is done. It's over. It's done. I don't know if it is done, uh, because once Trump gets into office in 2024, there may be a reckoning. There may be a real investigation into this where things are really uncovered. Here's the thing. I don't even think you need an investigation. You don't. All you need to do is have somebody go into the FBI, fire everybody who's corrupt, because there's people in there that know who's, who are, who's corrupt that you can trust. One of whom, former FBI agent, he's going to be on my show on Wednesday. We're, we're going to do a live stream on Wednesday to talk about all of this. I'm going to get his perspective on it. But at the end of the day, maybe you do need to have another investigation, but not an investigation about everything that happened. Not this overarching investigation that costs millions and millions of dollars and lasts for years and years and years. No, no, no. Very specific investigations about very specific people. Because I think we know a lot of the people involved already. So what you do is you find the people who were involved you do very specific investigations about those people and you arrest those people and you try those people and if they're found guilty and convicted, they go to prison and that's it, right? That's what we need. We need people put in prison for this. Shouldn't people be busted for these democratic dirty tricks? FBI, CIA, Justice Department, the Hillary Clinton campaign, then the Joe Biden campaign. If we're gonna clean house, if we're going to clean house in Washington, D.C., doesn't somebody someplace have to have some legal problems, convictions? I mean, someone has to be punished for this. Otherwise, what the heck? It'll go on forever. Just the next campaign, you know, God knows what the current Biden campaign is up to. Now, listen, I share your concern. Obviously, I was disappointed that Durham didn't uh, deliver more indictments. You know, I suppose his concern is it's very difficult to, to uh, convict a Democrat here in, in Washington, D.C., in this district because the, the jury pool is basically made up of 90% uh, plus Democrats. So, you know, he, he wanted, he wasn't going to indict unless he felt he could get a conviction. You can't have an election system that can be corrupted in this way, where the FBI tries to rig things for one opponent. Here, here's the, because here's the big thing, right? That, like I said, the FBI came out and they said, whoopsie, our mistake, my bad, we won't do it again. This was not a mistake. This was not a whoopsie. This was not a my bad, all right? This was corruption. This was people going in there and saying, we want Hillary to win, so we're going to fix things for her. We're going to spy on Trump's campaign and fix things so that Hillary Clinton wins the election, right? This is undermining the election process. This is treasonous. You need people arrested. You need there to be consequences for this kind of thing. The fact that there's been no consequences for this and nobody's gone to prison for it is outrageous. There are no additional charges. Nobody is bringing charges against Comey or anybody else. The worst attack 
on the American democratic system ever in the history of the country. And there's no consequence? Nobody goes to prison for this? I mean, obviously something's going on with Durham where he felt that he couldn't he had no power to do anything. I actually suspected for a long time that Durham was waiting for Republicans to win in the midterms, like win Congress and the Senate so that, you know, maybe there would be a little bit more leverage there. He could do some more stuff. But since we have like no power in Washington, D.C. anymore, I mean, the, the justice system is all messed up. Just He just released the report and was like, whatever, I don't know what to do. Here, here you go. There's the report. People are corrupt. What do you want to do? And the, and the FBI is just like, oopsie. <laughs> no, it wasn't a mistake. This was intentional. You intentionally tried to subvert the system, tried to subvert the will of the American people for whatever these FBI agents wanted, whatever the Clinton campaign wanted, whatever Democrats, whatever the deep state wanted. This is the kind of corruption we have to gut. And a lot of people are trying to take a very measured approach to it, which is probably the right approach. I don't feel that way. I feel like let's just dismantle the FBI now. Let's just dismantle the whole thing. Okay, start a new branch up, a new FBI, call it something else. And bring in some of the few FBI agents who were actually like decent and rebuild, rehire people, you know, give them a litmus test. That's like, are you a Republican? I know I think that's illegal, but I don't care. You know, like we have to do something to save the country. Right. Because you can't have the FBI just fixing elections and stuff, whatever way they want. A a big problem in America with uh, the young Democrats, young voters is that they're uninformed. They're completely uninformed. They just have like very little information. It's mostly false. They're being told a lot of BS by Rachel Maddow, people like that. So they think they know stuff, but they've not really done any deep dive research into anything. So they don't really know anything. They just know what they've been lied to about. And you got another problem, which is all the old people Democrats who have been voting Democrat their whole life, and they don't want to ever admit that they've ever been wrong about anything because they're too old to change. And they feel like they don't want their whole life to have been a lie. So they're just like, you know, holding on to those lies with every fiber of their being, just like, nope, nope, what I believe is true, what I believe is true, what I believe is true. And they will not accept any kind of rational reality at all. They just ignore everything, ignore everything, ignore the truth, because I don't want to believe it. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to know it. I don't want to believe it. That's that's the Democrat way. And so they just keep listening to Rachel Maddow because she's spoon feeding them exactly what they want to hear, whether it's true or not. Yes, the Durham investigation was a disappointment, but we kind of all expected that, didn't we? So we just got to put our energy into the 2024 election. I know a lot of people are saying, well, what's the point? Because we can't win anyway. Here's the thing. I do think we have exposed enough corruption that it is possible that we can limit the amount of shenanigans that go on in 2024. And it will allow Trump an avenue to succeed. I think there are going to be even fewer legitimate votes for Biden in 2024 than he had in 2020. And therefore, and and Trump killed it in that town hall. I think Trump may have even brought some people over to his side from the left even because it was so good. I, I don't know. I don't know if that's actually true, but I think that's certainly possible. All right, well, let me know what you guys think about the Durham investigation in the comments below. Again, we're going to have a live stream on Wednesday. Uh, That's going to be at 5 o'clock Pacific Standard Time. It's going to be at 8 o'clock Eastern Time. Be sure to subscribe to my Alpha Critic channel. If you haven't done so, pause the video now and go to Alpha Critic and go ahead and hit that subscribe button and watch those videos if you like them. Uh, You know, give me a comment, give me a like. I'm trying to build that channel as I said. And remember, it's not that the liberal friends are ignorant. It's just they know so much. That is not so. (laughs) I almost messed that up. All right. Good night, guys. You know, someone very profoundly once said many years ago that if fascism ever comes to America, it'll come in the name of liberalism. Fascism is private ownership, but total government control and regulation. Well, isn't this the liberal philosophy? The conservative, so-called, is the one that says less government. Get off my back. Get out of my pocket. Let me have more control of my own destiny.